basics comparing Mars and our own planet, Earth. Earth is almost twice the size of Mars. The diameter of Mars at the equator is 4,221 miles or 6,793 kilometers. The diameter of the Earth is about 7,926 miles or 12,755 kilometers. A trip around the Martian equator would be about 13,263 miles or 21,344 kilometers compared to 24,900 miles or 40,075 kilometers for the Earth. Mars rotates counterclockwise or to the east just as does the Earth. The Martian day is 24.6 hours long, so just a bit longer than a day on Earth. The Martian year is about 687 days compared to the Earth's 365 and a quarter days. Earth orbits the Sun at a distance of approximately 93 million miles. Mars orbits the Sun at around 140 million miles. The Martian gravity is about 38% of the Earth's. An object weighing 100 pounds on Earth would weigh 38 pounds on Mars. Let's now take a look at the surface of Mars and check out some of the major features of the planet. If we change our view of Mars from a photographic view to a view based on elevation, we can get a better sense of the features on the surface of Mars. This colorful view of Mars is based on elevation. It is often referred to as a MOLA color map. The acronym MOLA comes from Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter, an instrument that flew on the Mars Global Surveyor mission. Mars Global Surveyor began its mission in April of 1999 and ended its Mars mission in November of 2006 when it ceased operation. The data gathered by the Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter was used to generate the colored elevation map. If we take this spherical view and flatten it into a map view, we can better see the whole of the Martian surface. A quick look at the elevation key will give us a sense of what the map is showing. The darker colors are the lowest elevation points and the whites at the top represent the highest elevation points. Yellow represents the elevations near the zero point. Since there is no sea level on Mars as there is on Earth, Martian elevation is calculated relative to the Martian datum or the Martian areoid. The Martian Areoid is an imaginary sphere with its center coinciding with the center of the planet Mars. The Martian Areoid has a radius of 3,396 kilometers. Thus, the Martian Areoid, or datum, is the zero elevation point, or sea level, for Mars. The Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter data was referenced against the Areoid, or datum, to generate the MOLA elevation map. The highest point on Mars is the top of Olympus Mons at about 21 kilometers, or 13 miles above the Martian datum. This is about three times the height of Mount Everest. The lowest point on Mars is found in the Hellas Impact Basin at about 8.2 kilometers or 5 miles below the Martian datum. Another aspect of our map of the Martian surface is latitude and longitude. Latitude is referenced from the equator north and south. Longitude is referenced from a prime meridian which is arbitrarily set. For Earth, the prime meridian runs through the Royal Observatory in Greenwich near London in the United Kingdom. The Greenwich prime meridian was established in 1851 by Sir George Airy. In 1884, at a conference attended by 25 nations, the Greenwich meridian was chosen as the official international prime meridian. The Martian Prime Meridian was initially established from 1830 to 1832 by the German astronomers Beer and Modler when studying the rotation of Mars. In 1877, the Italian astronomer Schiaparelli used the same meridian reference for his map of Mars. In 1972, the U.S. Mars Orbiter Mariner 9 mapped the Martian surface in great detail. Merton Davis of the RAND Corporation used the detailed Mariner images to refine the prime meridian to a small crater which was later named Airy Zero after Sir George Airy. Mars longitude was measured 180 degrees west and 180 degrees east of the Martian prime meridian for many years. Around 2002 there was a trend toward using a planetocentric east longitude system for Martian maps. The planetocentric east longitude system measures longitude from 0 degrees to 360 degrees eastward from the Martian prime meridian. We will be using the planetocentric east longitude system on the MOLA map in this video. Let's now take a look at some of the major features on the surface of Mars. 
First, we have Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain on Mars and also the entire solar system. Olympus Mons is actually an extinct volcano. Back to the west, we have Elysium Mons, another extinct volcano. To the west of Elysium Mons, we have two areas of vast plains. First is the Isidus Planitia. Back to the east, we have the Utopia Planitia. Below the Isidus Planitia, we have the Hellas Planitia, or Impact Basin, the largest impact basin on Mars at 2,300 kilometers, or 1,400 miles in diameter. Above and to the west of Olympus Mons, we have the Amazonas Planitia. Back to the east, we have the Tharsis Montes, a large region dominated by three huge shield volcanoes, the tallest of which is Escrius Mons, which rises 18 kilometers, or 11 miles above the Martian datum. Below the Tharsis Montes, we have the Valles Marineris, the largest canyon-like structure in our solar system. At about 4,000 kilometers, or 2,500 miles long, the Valles Marineris would stretch from coast to coast across the United States, sinking four miles deep. Below the Valles Marineris, we have the Argiri Planitia, a large impact basin formed about 3.9 billion years ago. Between the two impact basins, we find the Terra Sirenum, a large area noted for massive cratering, including the large Newton Crater. Back to the north and eastward, we have the Crises Planitia. To the east of the Crises Planitia, we would find the Acidalia Planitia. Below the Acidalia Planitia, we have the Meridiani Planum, where we would find the Airy Crater in the Martian Prime Meridian. In the far north, we have the vast northern wastelands, which are called the Vastitas Borealis. This region stretches all the way around the North Pole of Mars, covering about 40% of the Martian surface. These are just a few of the major Martian features that stand out on the MOLA map. Let's now take a look at some of the major landing sites on Mars by spacecraft sent from Earth. The first man-made object to reach the surface of Mars was the Russian lander Mars 2 in 1971. It landed in the Hellas Basin, but unfortunately it crash-landed and returned no data. The first soft touchdown by a lander on Mars was the Russian Mars 3 lander, a sister craft to the Martian 2 lander. The Mars 3 lander touched down in December of 1971 in the Terra Sirenum just south of the Newton Crater. It only managed to function for about 15 seconds before falling silent. In 1976, the U.S. Mars lander Viking 1 soft landed on Mars in the Crises Planitia. The Viking 1 became the first Martian lander to soft land and successfully carry out its mission, which lasted for about six years. The Viking 1 also sent back the first color image from the surface of Mars. The Viking 2, the sister ship of Viking 1, soft landed on Mars in September of 1976 in the Utopia Planitia, about 200 kilometers west of the Mai Crater. Viking 2 operated for about three and a half years until its batteries failed. In 1997, the U.S. landed the first Martian rover Pathfinder on Mars in the Ares Vallis region of the Crises Planitia. The Pathfinder spacecraft consisted of a base station platform and a small rover named Sojourner. The rover functioned for about three months before falling silent. In 2003, the U.S. launched two rovers to Mars named Spirit and Opportunity. Both rovers landed on Mars successfully in January of 2004. Spirit landed in the Gusev Crater south of the Martian equator. Spirit operated until March of 2010 when it fell silent. Opportunity landed in the Meridiani Planum, not far from the Endeavour Crater, where it continues to function and work today. In 2008, the U.S. landed the Phoenix Lander on Mars, the first successful polar landing. The Phoenix landed in the Vastitas Borealis region near the Heimdall Crater, far to the north of Olympus Mons, in a 50-kilometer wide valley dubbed Green Valley. The lander functioned for about five months before succumbing to the harsh Martian winter. In August of 2012, the U.S. rover Curiosity landed on Mars at Gale Crater. Let's take a closer look at Curiosity in its new home, Gale Crater. If we were to fly over the surface of Mars, moving westward from the Valles Marineris, we would find the Gale Crater lying near the Martian equator about 1,830 kilometers or 1,140 miles south of Elysium Mons. Gale Crater lies along one of the most striking geological features of the Martian surface, the Martian Crustal Dichotomy. The Martian Dichotomy is a geological transition zone separating the southern highlands from the northern lowlands. Let's switch to a planetary view to get a better sense of this geological feature. 
In this Mola elevation view, we can get a real sense of the massive nature of the Martian dichotomy. The northern lowlands are on average about 3 kilometers or 1.8 miles lower than the southern highlands. Various theories have been put forth to explain the crustal dichotomy ranging from plate tectonics to a massive impact or impacts sometime in the distant past. No one theory seems to explain the dichotomy entirely. If we zoom back in on the area around Gale Crater, we can see that the terrain holds a lot of interesting features. One of the most interesting areas is the Aeolus Mincy, an area of mesas and deep valleys. The distance across the area shown in our graphic is about 540 kilometers or 336 miles, about the equivalent of driving from Phoenix, Arizona to Huntington Beach in California. Let's take a closer look at the eastern end of Aeolus Mincy. In this image from the European Space Agency's Mars Express Orbiter, taken via the high-resolution stereo camera, we can see some of the interesting features of the Aeolus Mincy. The sunlight is coming from the west or the left side of the photo, illuminating the landscape. As we zoom in, we can see ripple-like marks on the floors of the canyons. It is theorized that these ridges were created over the eons by the Martian winds blowing through the canyons. Geologically, these small ridges are termed yardangs. In this photo from a desert area on Earth, we can see wind-shaped sand dunes similar to the yardangs on Mars. As we pull back out and look at Aeolus Mincy from a distance, it's hard not to wonder if water ever played a role in creating the valleys and channel-like structures we see in the landscape. This brings us back to Gale Crater and the mission of the Mars Science Laboratory, aka Curiosity. The 90 mile wide Gale Crater is a prime location for studying the geologic nature of the area along the Martian crustal dichotomy due to its central peak Aeolus Mons. Aeolus Mons itself rises about 5.5 kilometers or 18,000 feet above the northern crater floor. The layered sediments comprising Aeolus Mons are estimated to cover 2 billion years of Martian history. These sediments are a record of the crater's geologic past, a past that may include the possibility of a lake of some sort. If there was once water in Gale Crater, this will be reflected in the sedimentary layers. Curiosity's mission will be to study these sediments and return the data to the geologist on Earth. That data will hopefully play an important role in solving some of Mars' mysteries. Let's take a moment to check out Curiosity's location in Gale Crater. Curiosity landed at the bottom of the northwest slope of Aeolus Mons. The latitude is about 4.59 degrees south with a longitude of 137.44 degrees east. If we switch to this photographic view of Gale Crater, we can orient ourselves for a look at one of Curiosity's panoramas of its landing site. Note on the north rim of the crater this circled peak. This is the same peak pictured in this photograph by the Curiosity rover. In the photograph, we are looking north toward the rim of Gale Crater. The mountain lies at about 24 kilometers or 15 miles to the north of Curiosity's landing site. Standing at around 1150 meters or 3,775 feet tall, the peak lies just a bit west of zero degrees north by about 15 degrees. As we start Curiosity's 360 degree panorama of Gale Crater, let's orient ourselves with the same peak we saw in our last graphic. I generated this panorama from one of the early 360 degree views taken by Curiosity. Starting at the north, we will rotate counterclockwise toward the west. The insert of the crater will help with orientation. The sun can be seen illuminating the west rim of the crater as we pan around. The crater rim to the west is about 40 kilometers or 25 miles away. As we move around to the south, we can begin to see the lower slope of Aeolus Mons. The high peaks on the rim in the distance are about 75 kilometers or 47 miles away. As we swing around, notice the dark colored dunes composed of basaltic sand. We can get a better sense of what they look like in this aerial view of the dunes. As we swing around to the east, we can see that the dark dunes stretch across the northwest base of the Aeolus Mons. The northeastern rim, which is about 50 kilometers or 31 miles away, is obscured by the dust in the air, which limits visibility. 
As we swing back around to the north, it's easy to see that Mars is a very intriguing place. It will be exciting to see what mysteries curiosity can unravel and what new questions may arise.